Hello everyone and welcome to Sketchbook Wonderlust. My name is Natalio and this is my artistic journey. While I faff around here at the start of the video mixing colours that I'm going to use later, a little bit of backstory is that I actually only started sketching and watercolouring last weekend. So this is also my first video and it's going to be quite a journey I think. So uh, I hope you will enjoy it and uh, I hope you'll stay with me. The technique I'm going to do for this sketch is paint first, draw later. So here I am prepping the page with water. Ideally you need a much bigger brush for this, but this is the biggest one I had and it seemed to do the trick. The kind of paper you use is important, so I have here a 300 GSM uh, sketch pad. It's just the cheapest one that I could find on Amazon that had uh, good reviews actually. It's nothing professional, but it's, it's working for me. I think it's a student grade pad really. The building that I'm going to be sketching today is this one. It is the boathouse from the village that I grew up in, which is in the north of England. I'm going to pop it up in the corner for you so that you can see it throughout the rest of the video for a reference. I'm going in with this kind of sandy, stony brown colour that I mixed up at the start of the video. I'm using a very wet brush and a big brush, so nothing, nothing that I would do details with. This is just to kind of colour block where I can see the browns in the picture. You don't have to be too detailed, just a kind of general gist of where things go. Just adding some reflection where the water is going to be later. Uh, the palette that I'm using is a Windsor & Newton palette. It's uh, a small travel palette. It's got 16 colours in it. Uh, but they're all really nice and you can mix anything from them I love this colour, this is sap green I've pretty much been using it for all of my base colours for my trees and grass and bushes and foliage and all of that kind of stuff it's a really nice start and it doesn't it doesn't overpower anything and then later you can build it up with the uh, different shades some Payne's Grey. It's really watery to keep it nice and nice and light and to help it blend with the other colours around it. It's important to wet the paper first so that the colours kind of shift and slide. I think that gives it a really kind of playful, whimsical effect. Just squinting at the at the photo to see where where the colour blocks are. It helps you to kind of not look at the details and just look at the colours. Now I think if you squint and look at the picture and the painting, they have a kind of similar vibe. The colours are in the same sort of place and it's kind of given me a marker of where I'm going to start drawing. But this is the boring part. Got to wait for these colors to dry. So I'm going to speed that up because it's really boring. Now that the paint has dried, which in real time took about 10 minutes, I'm just going to go in here with a, an HB pencil. Just sketching the outlines of the building, lines for the walls. We don't need to go into too much detail at this point because uh, we're going to go over it again later with pen. This is just to get uh, a rough idea. I'm not going for realism in this sketch, I'm just taking inspiration from the photo and I'm also kind of taking inspiration from the way that the watercolour reacted with each other on the page, the way it blended and moved. But I do think that the end result does give the vibe and the energy and the ambience of the, the boathouse, in almost kind of like a, in a fairy tale kind of way. 
I'm holding my pencil quite far back. I find that this helps me to be a little bit looser and a little bit less concerned about the details. Now that I have my basic pencil sketch done, I'm going in here with a black fine liner. This is a 0 0.03. It's very thin. And it's a waterproof ink. I've been watching a lot of other YouTubers before I started painting and uh, they like to stress that it has to be waterproof. So I'm learning from their mistakes. You can see now I'm holding my pen closer to the nib and I'm really taking my time over this part because now is when I'm adding in the details that I didn't do with the pencil. For example, there I noticed that there was some intricate details in the woodwork on the uh, gable end. I think that's called a gable end, like just underneath the roof there. And here I'm going in with this kind of bay window taking the time to draw the windows in, which I didn't do before. I find it quite difficult to draw straight lines um, in every orientation, so I switch my pad around all the time when I'm sketching or, or drawing so that I can get the angles that I need to so that my fingers and hand will do what I want it to do. I added some steps in on the left of the house and then I started drawing the bricks. And I wasn't sure if this was a good idea, but I'd started it, so I couldn't, I couldn't go back. So I continued drawing all the bricks, and then I tried to vary it up on this section here and do kind of loose bricks, because I thought I could see that in the picture. And then I went back to regular bricks. Then clearly I wanted to do more work, so I decided to draw in every tile on the roof, which was time consuming, but I think it was a good idea in the end because I think the overall picture would have been lacking if I hadn't done it. Just rubbing over everything very lightly with a soft putty rubber to remove any pencil markings that are left on the page. And now it's time to go in with the real paint. So here I'm just trying to bring out some details. You can see that my sketch hasn't fully conformed to the original washes of paint that I put at the start. There is a bit of the slate colour going up into the trees and the sky. A bit of that sandy stone colour going into the sky as well. In fact, hardly any of the slate colour is where it's supposed to be. But that's okay. It adds to the fun. I'm using a size 6 brush here just to try and work in as much detail as I can. Especially with it being quite a small sketch on an A5 pad. And uh, these bricks that I've made are very small. I'm not painting each brick individually, but I'm just kind of giving a, a hint to different textures and tones. Going in here with some darker colours for the for the actual boathouse. Now here I tried something different. I tried to put a bit of purple into the reflection. Um, at the time I wasn't sure, so you can see me there trying to soak it up a little bit. But uh, I actually think I really like it. I think it adds to the the fun of the piece, and it's very you know reflective. When when things are reflected in the water, they're not always the same colour as as they seem above the water. Here I'm adding in the ivy. I've gone for a slightly more muted colour. I think I added some brown to it um, to stop it being so vibrant. Now I'm adding some highlights and shadows to the bushes. 
just mixing up different shades of the same green that I used at the start. Dotting different colours around to kind of add some texture. Makes everything look a little bit more interesting. Now here I'm using some of that uh, purpley colour again to go for the reflection of this. I'm not sure, it's a very low-lying hedge. I can't even see if it's out of the water or in the water, but... I felt like I put this on a bit dark at the start, so uh, I tried desperately to... <laughs> to make it look more reflective by dragging it down with this flat ended brush and I think I got away with it. Just taking a green colour here to blend out that slate grey that was in the wrong place. I think I've got away with it. It's blended into the tree and it just uh, it just looks like a shadow and has added some depth to the sketch so I quite like the result that came from that and uh, I might not have had that result had I sketched and then painted so that's what I quite like about this technique is you get these kind of happy mistakes adding different shades of green some kind of yellowy colors for the highlights and then some more muted colours, browny colours for the shadows of the tree. I painted wet on wet so they kind of blend together which is a really nice effect. So now it's time to go in here with the, the panes grey and to fix the, the roof. As most of my roof colour ended up in the sky and the trees, it's now time to paint that in grey. Mixing up some different shades of that sandy colour, adding some reds to add some texture and interest to these walls so they don't look so flat. Maybe add a bit more realism. Painted in the chimney pots and the chimney tops here, adding some shadows. I didn't like how these two bushes or hedges down at the front had the same colour, so I started by adding some texture to this, this second one and then <laughs> I gave up on that and decided to just paint the whole thing in this darker shade of green, which uh, I actually really liked. Then I added a bit of Payne's Grey, just dotted that on top, so wet on wet again, letting it just merge and mix on the page to give it some texture and interest. So here I am frantically looking for the right pen that I want to use. On, uh, on that piece of paper in the top left corner, you can't see it now because it's behind the, uh, the picture of the boathouse, but on that piece of paper I have a swatch of all of the different colours from, from the palette, so I know what they look like on this paper. I also have a swatch of all of these pens, these are called Tombow pens, and they are water based and they really match well with the, with the watercolours, um, I'm really glad I bought those. And also all of my fine liners, because they're all different sizes. There's a little test of each one so I know which one I want to use for which job. And here I am using a fairly dark Tombow water pen um, just to fill in the windows. Uh, you'll notice that windows are normally quite dark but then there are some other colours. I see in this picture there are some reds and yellows in those bay windows. So later on I add those colours as well. Here 
here I'm taking uh, another Tombow, uh, a lighter one this time, but this is just to add some shadows. It really gives definition and contrast to the sketch and it really helps it to pop off the page. Adding the shadows is my favorite part. Uh, I really think it helps bring the, the sketch to life, gives it a sense of realism and really makes it stand out. I really enjoyed it. It's at this point where I'm normally like, yes, I like this. But I think it's probably easy to really overwork a sketch. So you need to know when enough is enough and when to put down the pen and when to stop adding shadows. Hopefully I will learn that one day. Again, using one of the Tombow water-based pens for the boathouse part of the house and then using a lighter one for the reflection. Here I am going in with the reds and the yellows just on those bay windows. It's only a tiny little detail but uh, I really think it helps give some realism that somebody is living there and they left something in the window. Maybe it's a I don't know, maybe it's a bunch of flowers or maybe it's a photo frame or something. Notice on the left I've left the, the steps unpainted. That was a conscious decision. I quite liked it that um, I was only painting and sketching within the confines of the first, uh, the first washes of paint that I put down. So as I had drawn those steps outside of the the first wash I didn't want to colour them in and uh, I like it. I'm taking a white gel pen now and I'm just adding some uh, window frames. The white that comes in the, the paint kit's not very good it doesn't it's not really opaque enough to go over the top of uh, darker colours. I have seen some other YouTubers that use gouache for this part but I don't have any gouache and I think the white pen works just as well. So I use the white gel pen for things like window frames and highlights. I also have a, a white Posca there if I need something a bit thicker. But for this sketch the white gel pen does just fine. Now I'm using a thicker fine liner. I think this might be the 0 0.8 or the 0 0.5, I'm not quite sure. But I'm using this just to go out and make some stronger edges where I think it's needed, mainly on window frames and uh, anything that I think would have a, a drop shadow behind it. Oh, I think this part here, from looking at the photo, I think this part was actually a drain pipe. I wasn't really sure, but I knew that it was very dark in the photo, so I added it. Going under the gable ends here, just on one side, just to make them pop out. Going in with some darker shades of green here again to add some more texture and depth. I like to work on one part of the sketch and then move on to another part while it dries and then come back to it. Picking up a juicy amount of paint there and flicking it onto the page to add some texture and interest. I quite like it when the colours land in places that they're not supposed to be. For example, the greens landing on the browns and the, the browns landing in the sky. Or even if the blue lands in the green. I quite like the, the interest. Adding some more flicks of paint there. The only thing I didn't like was when the, the droplets of paint landed in the the water section so i used this kind of splayed out brush i don't know the real name for it just to like brush them aside and uh, i think that added to the texture of the water 
It looked like ripples. I added a couple more flicks of paint and then some final shadows. Oh, and I noticed I'd missed a little detail there on the on the arch. And that's it. That's the finished piece. There we have the boathouse. Thank you for joining me on the first step of my journey. As I said at the start of the video, I only started sketching and watercoloring last week. So it's going to be a work in progress and I'm sure that my style will adapt as I get used to as I get used to painting and as I get used to knowing what I like from my results. But I'm very happy with this result. I think it's cute. I think it has uh, feeling and I think it captures the essence of the boathouse. It's not exactly true to life, but I love it. So I hope you do too. See you next time.